about you? Well, Q, thank you for having me this morning, and it's just uh, just a real honor to be with you. So I'm a homegrown Virginian. I was born in a little part of Richmond called Bonaire, uh, not really uh, the other side of the railroad tracks, but maybe on the railroad tracks. And uh, in seventh grade, my dad lost his job, and, and we moved down to Virginia Beach. My mom did what so many moms do in America today, which is which is just uh, support their family. Of course, my dad came with us, and we eventually got everything back together. But I learned a ton during that time of my life, Hugh. I learned how to work. I got a job taking out the trash and washing dishes at a, uh, at a diner. Uh, and I passed, cashed that first paycheck of, of minimum wage, and it was just spectacularly uh, impactful on me. Um, and, you know, Hugh, throughout my life, I fig- I've learned one thing, which is if you work hard, uh, then, you know, generally good things happen. Uh, after school, uh, we moved back, my lovely wife Suzanne and I, to, to Virginia about 27 years ago. And uh, I've been here uh, really doing the same thing that so many folks have been doing, going to work every day. Uh, raising four great kids. I know we're not supposed to be prideful, but boy, am I boy, am I proud of them and, and working hard in my church. And uh, I did join a small firm, Hugh, called the Carlisle Group. <laughs> Good and choice. It was, a small firm. <laughs> it was a small firm when I joined it, and uh, I worked hard and I actually had a chance uh, to run it at the end, and I was really honored and humbled to be able to do that. But I had a moment last summer, Hugh, where, where I was looking at my beloved Commonwealth, and I just couldn't believe what was happening. Uh, we were in the ditch. We are in the ditch, and I had a ch- I had a choice to either complain from the sidelines or get in the arena, and I've decided to get in the arena. Here I am running for governor, and I think Virginia should be the best place in America to live and work and raise a family, and I can't wait uh, to lead her to be that again because right now she needs a lot of help. Now, Glenn Youngkin, uh, you're a rice guy, double rice, and I want people to know, so you left, and you know how Texas works, and you know actually how everything works, because Carlisle Group knows how everything works. They're an incredibly successful private equity firm, America, if you don't know. David Rubenstein has been on the show a number of times talking about his books, and, and so people know the charisma of David, and uh, he only picks uh, AAA-graded people to work with. Uh, But, Glenn, I moved back to Virginia. It's my second tour in Virginia. It's my wife's third. She was born on Quantico, spent the first seven years there, moved to California. And here's an interesting story. All three of my kids born and raised in California, and the fetching Mrs. Hewitt and I all, we lived in California after the Reagan years for 30 years. We moved back to Virginia, and Virginia's in trouble. I I mean, I have to drive down to Virginia Beach because we got kids in the military, and that's the same road that's been built for 30 years is still being built. And uh, the roads in Virginia may be the worst roads in a major state. I know some little states have trouble, but what's, what are you going to do for the Commonwealth roads? I mean, I'm just a constituent right now saying somebody's got to do this better. <laughs> well, Q, first of all, thank you for coming home to Virginia. Uh, and I just, I just love the fact that uh, folks uh, have decided to make Virginia their home. And also, I'm, I agree with you. I think Virginia is in trouble. And I think it's in trouble because over the last uh, eight years, we have had a Democrat leadership that has really been more focused on building government as opposed to building Virginia. And just like you said, our infrastructure in Virginia does not work. Uh, Our port needs an enormous amount of work in order to make it uh, the best port in the world. Uh, Our highways need uh, consistent investment in order to make sure we can move goods and services around. Gosh, Highway 81 uh, which, of course, runs down through the valley of Virginia, is one of the most crowded uh, interstates in America. Uh, and it's dangerous to drive on. You, you're talking about Highway 64, that I-64, that runs from Richmond down to the beach. Uh, and, and there's a lot of good work going on there. But we need a lot more. Um, and there's a lot of discussion, you know, really about what we can do about broadband, Hugh. And why in the world we've now just started to think about how to deliver one of the most important resources, particularly to rural areas, and and we just really aren't even thinking about how to do it as a commonwealth, is unfair and unfortunately holds back people. And that's what government is supposed to do, is actually support and work for Virginians, not tell them what to do, not tell them how to live their lives but support, support them in their pursuit of what they're called to do. And so that's why I'm so excited to be doing this. I am so excited to be running for governor. I really do believe I can win, Hugh. I look forward to running against whoever the Democrats put up and uh, stepping in and leading Virginia in a very different way. You know, I'm an outsider. I'm not, I'm not plagued with, with years of political promises 
I, I'm not, I, don't, I don't bring any baggage. I don't owe anybody anything. And I'm going to be able to bring a fresh perspective and actually make the kind of decisions that Virginians deserve. And let me uh, add the reason I'm, I didn't take, but I don't know who's running on the Republican side, and I rarely get involved in primaries. But when I'm a voter, I do tell people, and I say, oh, I'm a Yunkin for governor guy because Carlisle runs on data. It runs on the objective assessment of the realities that your investors need you to take into account. And too often, government runs on ideological blinders firmly in, fa in place. So I'm going to take you to the opposite end of the problem of transportation. I'm going to take you to the homeless, uh, Glenn Youngkin. I've been working I'm out in California for a couple of months, helping some people out on the constitutional dimensions of the housing, homelessness, unhoused crisis in Southern California. But, you know, it's not just warm states. They're all over Northern Virginia. Yeah. People who have fallen on hard times are all over Old Town, all over Arlington, all over, uh, period, and in D.C. What do you think you're going to do about that? Well, she would just stop for a minute and have to reflect on the human tragedy that the pandemic has caused. Um, it's, a, it's been a health tragedy, um, but it's also been a personal tragedy because so many people have had their jobs interrupted, their lives interrupted. Uh, in Virginia, uh, 1.4 million Virginians last year filed for first time unemployment benefits. I'm gonna say that again, 1.4 million Virginians. There's only wow. 8 million people in Virginia. I didn't know that. And what that, what that represented, of course, was first uh, an economy that was not thriving beforehand, right? So this is one of our challenges, which is we actually had a concentrated economy in governments and in, in government related industries, which by the way, are, are great for Virginia, but we have to have a diversified economy with robust jobs. Uh, the second issue, of course, is that when our governor decided that he was not able to think through how to protect both lives and livelihood, he shut our economy down. And the small businesses in Virginia really suffered, really suffered. And so we had this massive unemployment uh, filing. And then and finally, we weren't able to process the unemployment claims. We were near the bottom processing unemployment claims. So what are we going to do about it? Well, one of the things that we can do is we recognize that through through training and and focus on high growth industries, there are lots of jobs. One of the things that my wife Suzanne and I got started last year in April was something called Virginia Ready, and it focused on in demand jobs and high growth sectors. She, I just called 25 of the of the business leaders across Virginia, and I said, "What jobs do you have?" And what I heard over and over again is, "We have jobs, tens of thousands of jobs in IT." in manufacturing and in healthcare, tens of thousands of jobs that were unfilled and all people had to do was earn a six to 12 week credential from their local community college. And so we just put together a program to highlight these jobs are available to actually reward people with a thousand dollar payment when they finished and then they can go interview for these great jobs. And, and shoot, there's two and a half thousand people who are on this journey from signing up to enrolling in the community college, to, to earning this credential, and uh, to getting jobs. And so See, that's a solution. Things, I, think, I love that. I got to ask you one last question. Keep, keep coming back, Glenn, because we will talk often in the, in the run-up to the election. But I got to ask you one more question. You've mentioned, Suzanne, your four kids. You're younger than I am, so you might still have kids at home who are dealing with closed schools. Are they all signed up? Do they know what's going to happen? Because uh, men and women who come out of the private sector walk into the into the torture chamber of politics, and they're sometimes blown back by that. Are you, is Team Glenn prepped and ready? Thanks for asking. Team Glenn is prepped and ready. I will tell you that my wife and four kids, and we have, we have uh, uh, one child at home who's in high school still. Uh, our other three are off in college and grad school, but this is tough. This is tough, but we're ready. We think, we think Virginia is worth it. We think serving Virginia in a way that no governor has ever served Virginia, which is to build a rip-roaring economy with more jobs than Virginians can take and to stand up for our constitutional rights and, and to win, Hugh, to win. And this is our moment as, uh, as Republicans to all come together and recognize that our shared values are not just for Republicans, but all Virginians want a rip-roaring economy and jobs and to feel protected by law enforcement and to have our schools open and to have basic services like the vaccine distribution uh, be efficient and the DMV to work. 
Uh, and it, you yeah, know, it's a mosaic so state, it's, too. It's People crazy, think of man. Virginia as Anglo. It's not. It's one of the most mosaic states. It's like California. And you've got to really be aware of that spectrum of ethnicity and religious background and age and um, origin. It's it's a challenge. Yeah. Well, it's not only it's not. A, I wouldn't call it a challenge. Hugh. I call it an opportunity. Yes. And I think it's an opportunity for us to to reach out to all Virginians, not just one group of Virginians and share a vision for a new day that gets everyone excited. I mean, I, I actually believe that, as I've said, Virginia should be the best state in America to live and work and raise a family, and that's why people live here. And I just so look forward to helping all Virginians see that vision and have that life. It is great to have you on for the first time, Glenn.